Sure. Okay, welcome everyone. We are in the Build It Big Workbook. Let's build a big workbook and we're on page 120 is the session for tonight, Design the Coaching Alliance. Now this was a very, I mean, I felt it was very good um, and that it really, you know, sets you up for the way to teach your team and work with your team. And so on page 120, the quote says, after the two of you commit to your coaching partnership, you can use tools to uncover the life priorities, positive attributes, and areas that need improvement. Then together, you can map the journey to her desired goal. And that's, that's a really important quote that they put in there because it is, it's helping them, but it's also them taking responsibility for their business and you not being the person that answers all the questions or gives them the goals because then they turn around and blame you if they don't do it right. Yes, go ahead, Teresa. You know, Don, as I was actually reading this, it kind of put me in the mind of my classroom. Exactly. Because we do not give the answers. Mm -hmm. We have to, to try and figure it out. We send them in the right direction and let them figure out the answers for themselves so that it will last within them. Right. And they'll always get it. So you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So see, it can be related to whatever situation you're in. Um, we won't go through the first reading, but that was in the Build It Big book, page 135. So did anyone make any notes about that, that read it? What stood out for you? I'm going to be honest, this week was really busy and I have not read this, but I'm going to speed read through it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So anyone else that read it, do you want, I mean, you know, what can you share? I made some notes, but I'll let you guys share first. I, I, I did. And um, I, it, it was, it was kind of like what I just said to steer them in the right direction so that they can take the responsibility and the ownership of the answer of the correct answers and the choices that they're doing and to build their own business and the sense of ownership. That is what stood out to me in the beginning of it. And I'm like, this is what I do every day with little kids. So, exactly. I mean, the same thing applies to grown people. Yes, it does, it does. And that's kind of funny because uh, Teresa, that's the same thing that stood out for me too. Right in the beginning of that, that's what stood out the most of the yeah. whole thing was the fact that you know, the team's got to start being accountable for their own actions for their business instead of having somebody else doing their business for them. Exactly. You know, yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. So, yeah, I was glad to see that I wasn't the only one that thought that stood out right in the beginning. Yeah. Well, you know, and the notes I made was uh, principle centered coaching skills increase your team members' confidence and self-esteem empowers them to take the action. And that, again, like you said, with your kids, you know, they've got to do that. And sometimes it takes some open-ended questions to help them tap into their answers. Where yeah. do you think you can find that? How would you go about doing that? You know, that mm -hmm. type of thing. And again, um, creates their confidence to solve their problems. So as a leader in Avon, what would you do differently next time you talk to, maybe it's your student or, or a team member, how would you ask differently next time? Those are good things to think about. And how will you respond differently? Okay. So, I mean, I'm still get, you know, trying to work that into myself too, because um, you know, what I've had like 76 or something new team members self-appoint since October. And so, you know, they have a tendency to just want you to give them the answers. 
And it's okay to some point because you're mixing the training with the coaching. So training, you know, you're training them on where to look, you're training them on how to find their answers, you're training them on the steps it takes to get an order, all of that is an Avon U, we know, right? But then, you know, you gotta, it's gotta become easier and see what you observe in your team. It's interesting when you see as you're coaching them, instead of giving them being the answer queen, you know, like they say in DSW, take off that answer halo, that you're not the answer queen, that you're their coach and gonna lead them to find their own answer. Well, I hope I'm nobody's answer queen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, our king, our king. Our you know, king. I had that fun with that Dawn. Yeah. I did see this one thing in here where it says, I see you. I, I think it's important to add to that that you have that conversation with your team member because you're telling them, yes, I see you have an issue, but let's work this out together so you know where to find the answer next time. Yeah. Because then this helps them be a better leader when they start building their team. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Exactly. Yes. You know, you don't necessarily start it out with, oh, great. You did that. Well, mm -hmm. you started out with, okay, tell me, tell me about what you've tried. Right. And then let's work on, you know, a different option to get there. Right. So, right. so it's all about, you know, letting them come up with the answers. Like I said, but leading them to the direction to find that. So um, see the difference between telling and coaching. Okay, that's a big thing. It's a big difference, whether or not you're teaching or coaching and ask what she could do to find the answer and how she could do it to change the results. Okay. So those are the points I wrote down in that first section of transform relationship through coaching. Okay. Any other comments or um, things that they got out of that reading? Okay. Then we'll go to the next reading, which was in the more build it big page 137. And Yes, I had to I had to hibernate in my little blow up bedroom <laughs> that I have upstairs this afternoon after giving my little baby cuddles um, to to go through these and read them. And so, you know, we could I would know what I was talking about tonight. So the next one is reveal her re-engaged vision. Uh, that was on page 137 and more build it big. Uh, share with me what things you got out of that section. I think one of the biggest things that stood out to me on this one um, is that you know, if, if a team member's having a problem, um, that first one, uh, acknowledge the problem exists and express your desire to get back on track. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes the problems can be so bad that you can't seem to get yourself away from it and try to get back on track with what you're doing, you know, so I can see where there'd be problems like that, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, preventing the team member to slip away or the student, you know, in Teresa's case, uh, preventing mm -hmm. them from slipping away, kind of re-engaging them, pulling them back in. And right. then guiding them to their goals and, you know, coaching them to their success, form a new partnership with them. You know, that's, I took that out of there too, because um, my situation anyway, I've got team members that have been with me a long time. And at one time they were trying to build a team, but it didn't work. You know, it doesn't work the first time, a lot of times. It didn't for me either. I lost like 10 people my first time in leadership. 
So I know that feeling, I know what it feels like, but then just making that connection back with them, asking them again what their goals, because they could have changed since the, you know, when you first met with them and mm -hmm. then seeing how you can coach them back into that feeling of what they, mm -hmm. what they can do. Again, it's about communication. You got to talk to these people. I, where Teresa, where you're at in school and, and you got the little littles, you got the little, little ones. Um, they don't have the understanding all the time about what you're trying to tell them. I and mean, you have to really get down to their level to have a conversation. But for most of people in a career or in a job, you're talking to people who have already made a commitment and they were wanting this already. So you mm -hmm. have to keep that line of communication open so that you can see what they're going through. You can understand what their problems are, their situation is, and you can help them figure out for themselves how mm -hmm. to redirect and keep going. Either that or, okay, maybe this isn't actually what they're here for and that their, their career in this particular area isn't going to actually happen. But um, if you're talking to us there, Roger, you're on mute. And, and I also found that even in this, you have to build that trust when you're building that communication with your team. You got to have some type of trust, maybe tell your story and your why, you know, to get them engaged and to say, I can do this because we just say, if I can do this, you can do this. Yeah. Because we were all, I'm sure, a little apprehensive in the very beginning. You know, I don't know if I should talk to that one. I don't know how that one's going to perceive this. But in order to be a leader, which I'm not yet, but in order to be a team leader, you got to have that. Mm -hmm. You do. You do. And that, you know, that is why it's a key thing. Whoops, we're not hearing Roger. He's on the phone, I think. Oh, Okay. Are you trying to communicate with us, Roger, or on the phone maybe? But I, I, like I said, and I've said before, as I talk to new people that re, you know, that re- Hold on, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, I'm caught up in something. Okay, okay, thanks. So as, um, you know, I talk to the new ones, and maybe it's ones that have been selling Avon for a long time, you know, it's back to why did you first get started with Avon? What was, what was it you wanted out of it at that time? And, you know, maybe it's changed, you know, if they're brand new, then, you know, that's what their, their thoughts are, you know, their thoughts might not be a real thought, but that's what you got to go with. You got to go with what they say, even though it may not be what you're thinking, right? You got to go with what they say and then work what you do around what they need right, right. so that's right. the coaching so and 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 don in in you know establishing what their goal is how often people's goals change mm -hmm. they when do. they're when they're i mean you start off in the beginning so oh i, I just want to make money. But I think the goal, don't they change at some point? Yeah, well, they, it could with their life situation, right? Mm -hmm. Their life situation could change their goal. I mean, it really did okay. for me. Excuse me. Okay. Um, you know, because I started 38 years ago with Avon. Mm -hmm. And my goal then was just because... Oh. I wanted to do something to be my own boss. I mean, I didn't like working full time. I just had my first baby and, you know, I was sick. I couldn't do that. So mm -hmm. it was like, this gave me something to be me and not just mommy, right? Mm -hmm. So, but now, obviously my goal has changed a lot and it has changed many times in 38 years. So it can, it can change. So as you're talking to new, whether it's new ones or ones that you've had in your team before that aren't engaged again, you know, how can we get them engaged? What can we do if we can do something? Sometimes we can't, we just got to say next. So. Right. 
Any other thoughts? Well, in the questionnaire section, three questions jumped out at me. Um, all 10 of them are pretty interesting, but number two, what's getting in the way of your dream? So maybe I jumped ahead a little bit on there. I don't know okay. if you want to go there yet, Dawn. Okay. I was going to point out those, those questionnaires too, but yeah. that's a good question to have on um, the, the rest of, of your dreams. The rest of these, um, other than these three that I was reading at, to me, it seems like that those are an ever-changing thing in your life, depending on what else is going on around you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, like kids or school or something. And, you know, they, they're not intentionally messing your life up. It's because this is your life and you just have to work around it. So those aren't, those to me were like uh, an ever-changing reason why things might be changing. But what's getting in the way of your dream isn't necessarily that I got my grandkids here. You know, they're here every day. It's like for the, and it's not just six hours from nine to three. It's from six to three because my daughter has a job and she's an essential worker. So she's at work every day and I'm watching the girls. So I have a nine hour job taking care of my grandkids every single day. So they're not really getting in the way of my dream. I just have to find a way to make my way around it to make my dream happen, which I can do, obviously, mm -hmm. because I've been doing it since they've been here every day since March. So because I watched them all summer and I'll watch them straight through Christmas holiday and whatever else I have to do. So that one, that one to me, I felt that was really important. Number five is what are you willing to, to overcome? What are you willing to overcome to achieve your vision? That one was really important to me too, because you want to direct yourself in such a way. Okay. So that's like, if I'm on a diet um, to overcome and to achieve my vision, I have to stay away from that little red Dorito bag. You know what I mean? I mean, it's an actual physical thing that I know it gets in my way and I will climb that mountain, eat every piece of it to get it out of my way. But truthfully, I'm not going to lose any weight that way, but specifically you have to overcome something. And I mean, it, it's not going to be, you know, okay, I got to get these kids out of here, you know, so that I can follow my dream because part of my dream is their welfare and well being. And I have to make sure education is part of that. Right. right. So I just have to take that next step. And then the last part was number 10. What are you afraid of? Well, isn't that a deep one? That is a heavy one because that tells you clearly what it is that you have to what you have to do to achieve any of the rest of those. I mean, all of them are important, but if you're afraid to overcome and, and get that dream and, and achieve that dream and, and your vision comes true, I mean, you can't be afraid of it. And if you are afraid of achieving that, I mean, you can always think, okay, this is just a stepping stone. It's what I want after I achieve my dream. That's going to be the big thing. So if I'm afraid of accomplishing my goals, I can make more goals that go beyond that. And that way, once I reach the one that I really wanted, I could start looking forward to the next one. And the whole process continues. Like right now, yeah, Brown's ambassador. I'm working towards that 14 members doing nothing, but that doesn't mean I can't have 12 of them where three of them are doing great, you know? Exactly. So that's, that's my goal for now, you know, but my dream is a little bit more than that and a little more than that. But right now that's my dream. That's my goal. That's where I'm going. And there's once I get that on the silver stepping stones in that way, but mm -hmm. going back to what you said in the beginning is, you know, the, everybody's got different obstacles. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got different obstacles. I mean, you know, that's a great part about when you're your own boss, because you set like, I mean, you know, I was able to drop everything and run to my son and my daughter-in-law and take care of my granddaughter while they spent three days in the hospital together with their new addition, you know? Mm -hmm. And then last night they came home from the hospital. Well, we were adjusting the two-year-old <laughs> to having a little baby sister and, you know, that type of thing. But, you know, those are just, those are just obstacles everybody has. And how are you gonna go around those? Are you gonna say, I quit? You know, that's another option, right? Okay, right, right, right. comes first, so I'm quitting Avon. I mean, I've heard that, 
Yes, your family yeah. comes first. But like Flo said, you don't have to quit Avon just to make your family come first. Right. And the one that stood out to me was number seven. Number seven is describe your willingness to work hard. In my classroom, one of our affirmations that my four-year-olds, we do every day, we can do hard things. We don't give up. We try, we try, and we keep trying. They are four years old, and they know we can do hard things. And here, it's in the book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that great? Well, so, I mean, I've got a four-year-old grandchild, it is. and when I'm over there, sometimes we're working on her letter book, writing her ABCs. And she goes, Grandma, sometimes I'm not very brave about what I do. It's Aww. like, oh, my God, is that just Aww. like coming from the heart or what? She, I'm not right. very brave. But then, you know, I had to go over to watch her two-year-old little brother because she had a sore tooth. She had to go to the dentist. And she took her little reindeer that matches the uh, elf on a shelf with her. And she comes in and says to Grandma, she goes, the elf was really brave. <laughs> the, you, you put those things in your life that make you accomplish the goals that you're trying exactly. to get. Exactly. You find a way to make it work. You have to. If you want to go, if you've got a goal and you want to do this, you have to find a way. Even if it's even if it's a reindeer being brave and anything. Yeah. That's very cool. That's a cool story. And if, and if you want to be a business, you know, be did have your own business, you got to be willing to work hard at it the way you want it to be. It doesn't happen overnight and it isn't easy. No, it doesn't. No, one ever oh, it's not it. easy. It's not. No one ever said it's easy. I never tell my new team members it's easy. I say you'll get out of it what you put into it. Mm -hmm. And that is really the way it is. I mean, you know, they always say to me, when do I get paid from Avon? said, well, what, what orders have you gotten? You get paid by getting orders, right. getting, you know, that's your commission. So if you're not working it, if you're sitting there posting on Facebook and expecting orders to just automatically come in. That it, ain't going to happen. That doesn't, that isn't the way it works. So first and yeah. foremost, we're, we're salespeople. Right, that's right. It. Yeah. You're independent sales representative for Avon products okay yeah, and sell some ice cubes to the eskimos and then you'll figure it all out right right yes exactly it's like you have to get it in your head that you're talking avon everywhere yep you no know? like i wore this shirt today i wore it primarily because i knew that i would see my daughter-in-law that's selling Avon as well. But right now she's got a little obstacle in her way, but that's okay. But she hadn't seen this shirt. So I wore this today so she could see it. And also her mother, or the other grandparents came in last night too. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's crazy, <laughs> crazy here. <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing what I said, a walk and model. Yes, I'm doing a walk and model because I know that her mother orders from her and she's still on my team so I mean you know that's the way it is that that's support you support is enough people get what they want you get what you want right right always, always repeat uh, Zig Ziglar he's a great great uh, motivator so yeah those things were good I also want to just go back a little bit and where we talked about refine your vision and make your commitment to help them achieve their goals, okay? So that's then the communication with them. But the specific time to call the team member, use this approach. And that was back on, um, on the acknowledgements. I think that goes back to, yeah, page 137, coaching for self-discovery. Acknowledge that a problem exists and express your desire to, for them to get back on track. So that's again, communication, like we talked, restate the original intent of your partnership with their original dream. Ask for her thoughts, his or hers, 
and to restate the dream and the vision for success. And then suggest two of you reestablish the partnership, request her agreement. Again, it's gotta, it's gotta be agreed upon by the representative as you being her coach, that this is what she wants because we can't want it more than they do. If they don't want it, then, you know, it's kind of a next. You move on to the next person that does want it. Present a coaching plan with agreed, up, agreed upon appointments and timelines. Okay. So again, that's more one-on-one, -on -one, working with ones that want it one-on-one. -on -one. So, you know, kind of after we get done with this build it big, that's when my one-on-one -on -one is going to pretty much start with those that get back to me that say, this is what they want. They want this. They set up the time with me that works out for them and me. And then we move forward on the goals and dreams and, and steps to achieve it. And I mean, it, it is so, I think this chapter session was so intense on, you know, how to engage people, how to get them re-engaged and all of that. So, you know, the same thing that you were talking about, I wrote down those questionnaires and the dialogue that's listed on page 138, you know, that's a good thing to go back and reread as you're re-engaging your team is I've missed working with you. Um, you know, I'm ready to partner with you to make it happen. I'm excited and ready to get started and set an appointment time and thank them for agreeing to do this. So, you know, they really spell it out well. They spell it out so well. I mean, and it, it all kind of comes back to me because I took this, you know, what was it? Eight weeks of coaching with, with Nikki Kiyoho uh, when we first started this program with the Build It Big. And, um, you know, I got to reevaluate myself on a lot of things that, you know, I need to put into action that I wasn't putting into action where my coaching skills stopped. So I think if we all think about where the coaching skills stopped, what step did we not take? Were we afraid? Were we afraid of what it might do to our time schedule, to our commitment ourselves? You know, it, everybody's different. So it's just kind of a self-examination on, on all of that too. So I thought that was really, really well. And then it, on page 139, it goes into life priorities. Anything else that we haven't already talked about that you wanna add to this? Again, it's all about what her priorities are, not what our priorities are. I guess the most important thing that I'm finding on this is that um, it's really important to talk to these people and find out what their goals are, what they think they want to do with the business. Because once you know what they want to do, then you know what direction to go in. Like my, uh, the, the one recruit that I had, uh, Nikita, she, she wanted to go on the trips. So I was telling her about all the trips that were coming up at that time because she could very well have made a, a success out of it. Mm -hmm. But she didn't want to do the legwork. She got her sister to place an order a couple of times. And then that was it because she didn't see a plan of action happening right away. And I told her, I said, you know, she was working in a tanning salon and I was trying to tell her, you know, that this is fine. You know, this is a nice stepping stone job. He said, but if you are going to get into sales, you have to put yourself out there. You have to go and talk to these people. They're your customers. You need them in order to do these things and have this trip which I was kind of happy that she, she signed back up because she's the one that disappeared and then came back. And I thought she came back because of the trip to Jamaica that I got for two. So I thought that she got excited about that, knowing that I was going to get to go on this Jamaican trip. And she had every opportunity to do that and go with me. Yeah. And I was telling them that the whole time. 
And I didn't really have that many more customers than she did, just a few. Mm -hmm. And I built it up and I worked it and I went out there and I threw those books on the driveway and I threw about 300 books out every couple of months or so. And I mean, if, if you don't put forth that effort and you expect things to just fall into your lap, then you don't have a very clear perspective on what direction you're going in. So you got to find out what they want out of it and where they think they're going. Now, my newest recruit, she just wants it so she gets the discount and maybe her parents or somebody she knows might want it. That's the only reason why she's in it. So I get that. She's, she's going to be an occasional person that's going to buy something and, and that's as far as it's going to go. So yeah. I don't have somebody on my team that wants what I want. And those are the ones I'm looking for. Yeah. The ones that want what I want. You've got to look for that. They can't rely only on family. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Family is wonderful. But, you know, when I started out, my family didn't want to have anything to do with the direct sales business. Nope. So, I mean, you, you can't rely on that, but you can't want it more than them. And if they're not the ones that want it, you got to go out and find those pearls that do. Yep. I always look about it and it's funny because I use it this way, but you, you don't find success in your own hometown. You just don't. I mean, and people know you and the best example of that is Jesus. Mm -hmm. None of those people in his own town wanted anything to do with what he was selling. Exactly. You know, he was selling eternity and nobody wanted it, you know? So yeah. it is, People in his town, his family, I mean, his mother, and he had brothers who believed in it and cousins because John the Baptist was his cousin. But still, the other people in the town, I know him. Isn't he at the carpenter's son? Yeah, yeah, but he's the savior of the world. Oh, no, he's not. You know, we're waiting on him still. Okay, you know, you don't find glory or you don't find uh, you don't find what you're looking for in the people that know you because they only remember the way you were, not where you're going. They don't know that. Exactly. So. Exactly. And that's exactly the situation with my family. I gradually, you know, now I do have my sister selling Avon as well. She's in Arizona now. Uh, you know, a year ago, lost her husband to cancer, but, you know, she's now doing doing the business with me, you know, my daughter-in-law, she's only been doing it for a little over a year. So, I mean, you know, you've got to prove, like Flo said, you got to prove that those trips and that other stuff that comes with as the bonus does come. And when they see that, then they come around and go, oh, oh, wow. Well, you've done this much in sales in a year's time? wow, how are you doing that? And then they start asking questions. And so you got to show it to people because you don't know who's going to be that one that goes, hmm, I didn't know that you could get that from Avon. You know, while I'm here too, I'm in a virtual Facebook party with a group of people from all over the country. So, you know, I'm watching my granddaughter, but I'm on my phone going, okay, it's been an hour, I can post again, you know, <laughs> and that type of thing. But going back to my library of things that I've used before and just sharing those things because it's a whole different group of people that I've never had contact with. So I'm sharing the fundraising opportunity. I'm sharing the benefits of becoming an Avon rep. I'm sharing our great products. I, I, you know, trying to put a lot of variety out there. So there is a lot of virtual shows. If you check that out online um, that people are doing, and I think there's going to be a lot in January, you've got to be the one that gets into that before another rep, Avon representative gets in because they only allow one per business. So, you know, check oh, it. That's what you were doing. Right. A virtual. Yeah. It was somebody I, mean, I paid. Okay. I paid six fifty and offered a raffle prize. I mean, the raffle prize, $10 was the minimum, you know, that it had to be. Well, you know, I've put together cups, mugs and things like that. That's the easy part. I paid six fifty to be able to get engaged with these other businesses I don't know if they're interested in Avon or if it's the people they know. So everything that I have been focusing on 
to get engagement has been, who do you know that may need? Who do you know that, you know, for fundraising? Who do you know that needs a last minute gift we can order right through the 15th, which is I think tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? 15 yeah. tomorrow or today tomorrow yeah i've lost all track of the calendar being <laughs> and my sons but you're absolutely right everybody that i know right now none of them really want to do this but i keep telling them i said surely you've been talking to your friends i mean everybody has at least five friends they talk to every day right well yeah. almost any, every day but you know surely you have five friends that it uses a lot of cosmetics. Somebody maybe who has an allergic reaction to their, their skincare and is looking for a better product. Somebody who wants to do something other than crust toothpaste and is willing to try something else. You know, I mean, there's so many things. An anniversary, you got a friend's anniversary who's coming up. Do you want to have her husband give me a call and I'll set him up with a couple of really nice pieces of jewelry, you know? Yeah, I mean, you give that, you know, he could give you a price point. You could go from there, right? So exactly. there's lots, and you know what? I know that you know Christmas is is around the corner, but we go right into Valentine's Day as soon as we get done with Christmas. So yeah, I saw that. It I saw not, that. It does not stop, and you know I'm talking now more. Yeah, specifically. Yes, yes, I've got that. I thank goodness I didn't place my order before, like on. Thursday that I was thinking about placing my order <laughs> and I left That's it huge. in my order cart. Those That's are so huge. cute. I the know. Palm of my hand. Oh, they're big. Uh, and yeah, I've got one of those coming too. It's going to my bestie customer. Yeah, yeah. Those are, I mean, what were they in the demo? Five bucks or something uh, like that? As a, as a, I can't remember what it was. I was just looking right. at the invoice on that earlier and I still can't remember. Right. So, I mean, you know, that's the thing that we have to be talking to our team members to get them engaged is that we are moving right into Valentine's Day and that there's no break after Christmas because remember our small window for making PC President's Club in 2021 stops in campaign 21 and you earn for the rest of the year at that level. They were $5, my cost. Yeah, $5. That's what I thought. So, yeah. I mean, we can only order two as a demo, but that's what I did with those two. And, and then two go on from there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, again, we're talking about engaging, but this is engaging your team members or new team members about, you know, what their opportunity is, what mm -hmm. they've got on the table. Because if we don't tell them, nobody, nobody else will, you know, we got to tell them. So, I mean, I'm always thinking that way. I want everyone to always be thinking, how can I engage someone? Whether it's somebody that I'm just going to text a message to, whether it's a virtual show that you're going to be involved in, or whether it is through Facebook, but don't count on Facebook. I mean, Facebook is is pretty much, a lot of people are going to other social pages. I've had a lot of people invite me to other social pages. They're kind of, you know, fed up with Facebook. So we need to look different angles. Can't rely on one thing. It's gotta be a multiple of things to get engaged. Well, I've been, um... Speaking of other social media, I just, I joined, last week I joined TikTok. Yeah. There's some funny things out there, but today was the first time I did anything with Avon. And what had happened is I had my grandson for a couple of hours because my daughter-in-law went to get an imaging done of the baby. Mm -hmm. So I had my grandson and I chased him around for a few hours yet this morning and he picked up that little stars, the moon and stars globe that they've got in the book right now. And it spins and it throws stars everywhere. We were in the kitchen with the lights off and he was holding it and hugging it and loving it. He's only, he just turned three. So he's just a little guy, but he was loving it so much. And so I took a video of it and I showed how he was loving on it. And he's sitting there and talking about it. And he's, he's pointing up, it's the stars and the moon. And it was just cracking me up. Mm -hmm. So I put, I put that on there um, 
my nephew, my grandson is learning about the stars and the moon and you can teach your little ones the same thing. You can get these still from Avon and then I put my Avon store on it. Exactly. It's, like, it's, it's your everyday lifestyle that yep. you're converting to put Avon in it. Yep. I mean, I took pictures of the clothes that I've seen other people post. So it wasn't me in the clothes. It was like five different representatives. And that was one of my things I shared on the virtual site. Because yep. people don't think of clothes when they think of Avon. You know, no, no. they don't. I showed the picture of the two different boots with that. So it was like five different pictures. And it was like, then, then I could see who was liking, who was loving. And mm -hmm. I could then invite them to my online store. I just and did that also, with the cardigan and I already have an order for one. Yeah, yeah. But I got it and I was wearing it and it's like, ooh, wouldn't you love to have this? It's nice and lightweight. And they're like, yeah, put me down for one. It's like, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that too. And like the last virtual event that I did, um, you know, I had someone private message me that was interested in Avon. And so, you know, you don't know what's going to come of this. You don't know. So it's like, if you're not, if you don't try it, of course, nothing's going to come of it. You know, well, the answer is always no, if you don't try it. Exactly. And, and another representative is going to get that advantage and you're not. So, right. so engaging and that let's go back to the workbook to get back on our theme here. Um, Cause we got about 10 minutes or so to go. Um, on page 120 in where it starts about design the coaching alliance, uh, make a fresh start. And it, it talked to me, <coughs> excuse me, it talked to me about a coaching is offering in the form of an invitation from mm -hmm. you made available to your top performers and rising stars. Okay, and then, you know, each paragraph said something to me. Um, the one thing that I underlined was four simple steps to design a coaching alliance. And then it goes on to the next page, telling those alliances, as well as on page 122, gives you an alliance form that when you're talking to that person, whether it is a team member from the past or a current team member, what, what lines to fill in? And you're gonna just fill this in when you're talking to them on the phone. What a great tool that, that they give you in this book, Build It Big. Glad to have you back, Teresa. <laughs> Are you, can you hear us now? Yes, okay. Um, so what, what did everybody else, what, when you were reading through this section, what, what stood out for you? What brought it to you? Well, for me, it was the, the whole page. It's very, uh, it's very clear and it's not confusing and it's not intrusive in someone's life who may not want that kind of an intrusion or a question. I know questions like this makes me uncomfortable, but this isn't set up in a way where I would be uncomfortable. I know somebody says, well, what's your reason for selling Avon? And it's like, well, I like it, you know, so that's not a very good reason in itself other than, you know, okay, yes, yeah, so I wanted, and that's how I actually started. I wanted the discount. That's how I started. But then I realized, wait a minute, if I want that discount, what about somebody else? And maybe somebody else would like that and sell it to their friends too. So you have to give them the opportunity. But I was thinking this whole page, uh, well, this whole portion of it anyways, would be a great thing to make a whole bunch of copies, put in a three ring binder and start hitting people up and just asking them, right. what are you doing in your current career? Is this giving you what you need in your current career? And would you maybe want to do this or try this on the side and maybe someday saying goodbye to that current career? Right. And it's really good. If you make a good goal at that and you make a, a good run for it. I know from our meetings and stuff where we've gone to meetings, um, people have just done, all they did was just the... <laughs> Um, the uh, fundraisers and they're making a ton of money enough to quit their previous job just from fundraising right like girl how do you do that I'm your new best friend show me you know but 
seriously, I, I think this is a great idea. I love this page and I want to make a bunch of copies of it. Well, and that too, if they just give you the answer, like I want to earn some extra money, you as a coach need to bring on the questions to dig deeper because there's probably something else in there that, you know, that's an easy answer. I just want to make some extra money. Well, okay. How much would that extra money look to you? What, what would you do with it? How much is that extra money? Okay. Yeah. What do you want to do with that extra money? Yeah, right. exactly. So break it down because then you're getting deeper into well, I couldn't pay my rent or my electric bill is going to be really high for the winter or whatever, whatever it may be. I mean, I've been talking to a lot of single moms with kids that they're looking at, you know, uh, how they can, you know, help support themselves. Right. Yeah. So, so there's lots of things like that. And everybody is so different that it is important as a leader, as a coach, for them to take them down the steps. They don't know it if we don't bring it to them. So they don't know the steps. They don't know it like we know it. And sometimes you got to step back. And I got to think back to myself when I got started. I was not coached by anyone. I was just put on by my mother-in-law because, you know, my husband said, why not give it a try? Help my mom out, right? Sure. I'm not a salesperson. I don't want to be a salesperson. I'm not going to go knocking on doors. You know, all of that was my attitude. And when you can explain to other people that my attitude was not to be the top of the leadership level at the very beginning, you know, and, and, you know, it may be a simple little thing that they need to know. And that's, that's what you got to think about the simplest little things that have worked for you, maybe will work for them and get them into that, you know, believing because that's what we're really doing is getting them to believe that this business can do that for them to give them what they need. You're absolutely right, because, you know, like I've said before, you all remember, but I'm ready to retire. I, I, I have enough years that I can just walk away, but do I really want to go and punch the clock someplace, or do I want to have the freedom and the flexibility? And this business would give me the freedom and the flexibility that I want to do things that I want to do and spend time with my grandchildren and not have to go and punch a clock and still have business. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you go out and get what we call a J-O-B, you're helping someone else get their dreams. And goals. Uh -huh. right. <laughs> so, you know, let's be a little selfish, right? And get our own dreams and goals, right? So... Oh my goodness, I got an X out of something here. I'm not using my new computer. I'm using my old computer because I haven't <laughs> moved everything over. And so it's popping up with the virus here, a virus there, you know, whatever. I love but, that computers where they do that. Yeah. So Your old computer has COVID. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So anything else? Um, you know, one thing I underlined on page 123 is I'm calling for two reasons. First, I'd like to review your vision and your goals. Second, I'd like to share about a, you know, a new three month coaching program I am gifting to team members. And then you open the conversation so we can see if coaching could support you in reaching your goals. Okay, so some great, great tools um, you know, to go back to when you get in that opportunity or you create that opportunity for yourself that you can, can offer this coaching to them. So, and it, it, it breaks it all down. You know, it's all part of the critical steps and the conversation and the invitation to a team member. 
this is nice. It says also convey your sincere desire to help them achieve their dreams. That's pretty cool. Yep, it is. It's all about them. We got to, I know that it's going to help us all the way up the line, whether it's one of your team members coaching one of their team members, or whether it's you coaching someone else, we got to always remember it's all about them. And sometimes it's hard when you start throwing the who, what could you do? How could you do that? Those kind of questions at them because they can kind of, you know, kind of clam up, you know, and not really think deeply about it. So it's listening skills too, listening to what they say and then focus your question Next question on, you know, give it a couple seconds after they say something so you can think so that you're listening when they're talking and then you come up with that question that's going to dig deeper to get a more of an intense answer on, you know, because a lot of it's going to be the first response you get is, I don't know, right? Where do you go from there then? You know, where do you go? Think about the who, what, when, how, why, you know, that type of thing. Or you can repeat the question like, I heard you say earlier that this was something that you was part of your goal. Then that gives them a chance to come back again. And kind. you can't do that all the time, but you can use that when you really can't come up with anything next to ask them. If you're listening to what they say in the beginning, you can go back to that and then say, I heard you say, so explain to me how this is going to work. You know, that- you have a plan and to take notes when they talk so that you can- exactly. I mean, they may, they might just be talking and shooting off the cuff and they may not really be hearing what they're saying, Mm -hmm. but they mean what they're saying when they say it, but they have no idea that they said a little piece of this here and a little piece of that there and that they're connected, that they mean something. It's something important to them that they might've just blown off because it got lost in the shuffle. But if you're listening and you're taking some good notes on what they're talking about, you can go back to that if they stumble a little and say, but wait a minute, about half an hour ago or 20 minutes ago or mm-hmm. just a second ago, you were saying blah, blah, blah. And, and why would you say that? What, what made you say that? And then that might actually refocus them and they can continue on with what their goals are. So good yeah. taking, good communication. And, and, and that makes them feel goodness. good too, because they know you're listening to them. No, yeah. Right, 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 right. I found that good, that, that good too, because when I saw in here, because I'm the one who takes notes and writes down everything, okay? But then when it said here in the in the workbook, you know, create a file folder, take notes and all the notes that you keep, take on that one, put it all in the file folder, then you've, you know, created that one file on that person. And you can always go back to, remember when you said, let's focus on this, let's get this done. Mm-hmm. So I like that. Yep, create steps, create how you're going to help them with their needs. And that's what it's all about, right? Okay. Anything else anybody wants to share? Yes, I, I'm sorry, I do. I feel like I'm talking too nope. much, but you no. Know, my, my final thing when I, when I was looking at the workbook, the moving forward on page 125, mm-hmm. I thought that's some it just summed up the whole thing. A vision provides the inspiration for the action steps to be taken. As you begin coaching a team member, you will want to hold them accountable for their vision and the action steps needed to reach it. Yeah. No. That's perfect. That's it all right there. In a nutshell. It is. It, it is. It, it really brings yep. it all together, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it, it is. it is so... Such a good chapter. I mean, oh man, you know this this uh, this is just something that anybody in life it would would help them, no matter if they're with Avon or not. You know, it would. So, okay. Anything else? It's seven o three, 
And so um, we didn't start right at at six at six o'clock your time. <laughs> of course, we're seven o'clock my time on Eastern. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, this is a very good chapter to just really, I mean, well, this whole book is wonderful to refer back to when we get done with this program. But anything else on this session um, that, you know, we need to, we need to point out for some good tips. Only just the communication thing more than anything else. Yeah. Um, a, a good coach or a good leader is going to continuously communicate with their downline to see how they're doing, to see if they're reaching the goals that they've set. I mean, you don't even have to set goals for them. They don't have to do the Avon goals. This, they set their own goals. Okay, I'm going to have one more customer this week. Of course, the, if you're saying I'm going to have three customers a week, you might need nine customers to achieve that. But right. at the same time, communication with them shows that you care about what they're doing with their business. You care about where they're, where they're uh, moving forward or whether they're slipping or you can be there to cast away any doubts they might have or any questions that they may have. You're there to answer those for them. It's all about communication, keeping those lines open and talking to them about their business, their goals, their life and where they plan to be. So they know that they have someone Right. Someone to help, someone to support, someone to walk them in the direction that they want to go. And all of that is, is an important detail um, for someone new or for a current team member that you have. So yes, communication is the key. And there can be lots of ways of communicating. Some people don't like to be on the phone. Some people prefer text. Some people prefer messenger. Some people prefer an email, you know, that's for people want to knock on a door and talk to somebody at the park or run into them at the grocery store. And I'm, I'm none of those people. I'm, I'm not a talker. I'm, I'm a surprisingly, I'm a shy person. I, I mean, unless I know you fairly well with, with all of you guys, I'm, I'm okay to be silly because I know it, it's an okay thing to do. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I used to not be in, I mean, now I'm at that age where it's like, I don't care anymore. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go talk to everybody, anybody, say anything, do anything. I mean, I'm too old. What are you going to do? Sue me. Good luck with that. You know, <laughs> well, seriously. Now, 30 years ago, when I was in my 30s, I mean, I wasn't like that at all. I was, I was shy. I was quiet. I was very much an introvert. I didn't, um, I didn't go out of my way to talk to people. Avon would not have worked for me. And I did try it twice before now. And it wouldn't have worked either time because of the personality that I had on myself. And, and now I'm at that point in my life where I just don't care anymore. <laughs> I'll well, do it. You, know, you say that, but you know, before I started Avon 38 years ago, I was a wallflower at those parties. Yeah. I did not talk to people. I was afraid to start a conversation with someone. That was me. But you know, Avon brought it all out in me because when you love what you're talking about, it's easy to talk. Right. So, I mean, you know, I mean, I was not a seller when I started. And it's like, I just, you know, love to pull out. Uh, a lipstick or something wherever I'm at and go, you know, like here, <laughs> I got one of my lipstick sticks right here, you know, the flat velvet lipstick, uh, you know, in red, right? But having that, you know, it's like, I'm going to go upstairs <laughs> afterwards and they're going to go, whoa, you uh, curled your hair, you put on lipstick, you put on makeup. <laughs> because I, I've been doing nothing but babysitting. So, right. I don't, I don't, I can leave my face to have a break. Right. I didn't curl my hair till right before I was going to have this session. So, I mean, you know, it's okay. Those things are okay. And, uh, you know, that's what my, uh, my daughter-in-law's dad said to my daughter-in-law. So are you in this session that Dawn's doing tonight? Okay. <laughs> 
She said, no, I'm not in this session, but I am in her team. I said, yes, you can be in my session on Thursday night, you know? And yeah. uh, he was like, oh, you're doing another one of those Zooms on Thursday night? I said, yeah, yeah, you know? You got a team. You, you got a team and we talk and we learn and we do things together. Right, right. There's, I mean, even though we're Christmas is around the corner, there's a lot of new things that we need to talk about on Thursday night. So, but getting back to BIB, um, the next session is going to be looking at my calendar. Um, it won't be, it won't be next Monday. Okay. Uh, we are going to take a break, break on the 21st. On the 20th, we are coming back to uh, <laughs> to Michigan again uh, to have Christmas with our son as that was the original plan that we would come that week and uh, stay through the 30th when the baby was originally scheduled to be born. Um, so we're leaving tomorrow. We're gonna go home, got, got a doctor's appointment. I had to reschedule my hair appointment. <laughs> <laughs> she got me in and so um so yeah we're we won't be meeting next monday the 21st i hope everyone have a very very blessed happy uh, merry christmas and uh, now it's up to you guys if you want to meet on the 28th after christmas or you want to wait for the 4th of January? Let's go the 4th. 4th of January? Okay. Yeah, I'll go 4th. 4th. Okay. Everybody else? Okay. 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 Taking a couple weeks. We can and, do a uh, little bit extended time that time and work on two sessions if you choose to. Well, you know, what is the thoughts on that? We've done that one other time. We just yes, started we a little bit earlier started a half hour earlier. This, this one just has one uh, other page in the uh, Build It Big. Right. And the next one also only has one page in the Build It Big. Right. So the so power of acknowledgement and befriend your inner critic. Yep. It right. could be a shorter session. So, and we mostly got through this big one uh, today's in that half hour. And then we just kind of stretched it out a little bit more talking about communications and uh, staying open for our, our team. But um, yeah, I think we can knock it out, two of them out. That'd be oh, nice. Yeah. If there's still six to go. Yeah. 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 Well, let's do that on the fourth then. We'll okay. uh, cover the power of acknowledgement on page 126. And we'll also cover the uh, befriend your inner critic. And this is going to be a good one too. So we'll probably, uh, you know, spend a little bit more time on the inner critic. And then um, that's like uh, four and a half pages. So and that what was, pages that would start on, Dawn? 126 is the first one. And yep. 29 is the befriend your inner, inner critic. And that goes okay. to 133. Yeah, that, okay. that first one isn't very long at all, and we should be able to knock it out in no time. Yeah, yeah. One thing to read, and then we'll cover, you know, the booklet after we go over what everybody got out of what they read. And uh, so then we'll start instead of at 6 o'clock Central Time, 7 mm -hmm. o'clock Eastern Time, can we start at, at 5.30? 5.30, I can. We'll still go I to can. 7. 5.30 to 7 okay. on the 4th. And okay. if it's Eastern time, that would be uh, 6.30 to 8. So okay. Eastern time would be 6.30 to 8. Central time would be 5.30 to um, 7. seven. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, that sounds okay. good. My brain's still working, even though I'm kind of on vacation. <laughs> So, okay, I am going to stop the recording. Okay. Here. Um, thanks, everyone, for listening to this recording. Join us on the 4th.